Hi, it's Sonia Sab again. I'm here to talk to you about how you can possibly use Google Forms in order to make your NJCTL reviews. There is going to be one sample that is placed inside the communal area where we have our shared files. If you would like to go ahead and make your own after this, this is how I made mine. First, I gave it a title after I opened Google Forms. So what I had done was, as I'm making an assignment, instead of adding, because it was not made already, I hit Create, and I hit Create Forms. It stays blank here, where it says Untitled Form, until I have finished filling this all out. So I have fin I'm working on filling it out now, and I've called it Week 1 in JCTL Review. If you notice, the lock view is on, and then I have my very first question, what's your full name? Because if you don't remember who it is, you're going to have to try to decipher through however many student ID numbers are there to figure out how to give whoever they need to give their grade. And this way, it'll make it easier to communicate with Google Classroom because it's in their names that you have on Google Classroom. So as a matter of fact, what is your full name in Google Classroom? You see how easy it is to edit. There will be a sample there that is going to be shared with everyone so that you can edit it and change it as you wish. You can take the Bitmoji out, leave it in, your choice. Um, one of the things you have to make sure you do is use your settings. When you first get into Google Forms, it will not be set up as a quiz. It will be set up under general. You have to go to quizzes and make this a quiz. Because we're using Chromebooks, you can turn on the locked mode. So when students go to take this quiz, they aren't allowed to open up any tabs or applications while they're taking the quiz. So less cheating. And when they're done their test, I want them to be, get their submission back. But I do not want them to have their answers so they can't give the answers to anyone else. So again, less cheating. So those are my settings. And once I get the questions kind of set up the way that I want them to be, for instance, I'm working on this question here. You travel at a speed of 20 meters per set for six seconds. What distance have you moved? And then I decided I wanted a picture in there. I was able to put my answer in using the answer key button. It just basically tells me how many points it's going to be worth. And I have selected the one that is the correct answer and I hit done. And I have made sure that it is a, a required one. They cannot skip it. Because I have some settings in here that I want to reuse, instead of starting from scratch all over again, I will just hit duplicate so that I don't have to go through all of that again. If I want to change my picture, I can come right here and I can hit change. I don't have to have it already saved. I can just do a Google image search. And then I can find someone who is biking. And this way you can't tell what they look like. So I'm going to use this one. You can resize the picture if you don't want it to take up so much space when they're working on it. And then I would just go and change the information here and customize it for this particular question. That's pretty much it. When I'm all done, I will send it to the students after I make a copy for you guys and put it in the folder. Good luck.